<laughs> Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Rider podcast. Now, as you all know, I've been running around the Venetian Hotel this week in Vegas, speaking to as many people as I can here at the Adobe Summit. And I discovered a company called Content Square today, which is an AI-powered user experience, analytics and optimization platform for major retailers. And some of the biggest brands in the world, including Walmart, Tiffany's, Avon, GoPro, and so many more. And what I discovered blew me away. Content Square Chief Partnership and Strategic Officer Jean-Marc was also speaking on a panel with executives from Ralph Lauren, Sam Edelman, and Matches Fashion. And they were discussing how smart analytics and customer-centric attribution can help elevate the digital customer experience. And ultimately drive higher conversion. Now, I know I've been bombarding your podcast feeds this week with interviews around personalised experiences, etc. But trust me when I say, you're going to want to listen to this one. And it'll really make you think before you go on a click rage waiting for a page or a photo to load on a website. So buckle up and hold on tight so we can speak with Jean-Marc from Content Square, who's going to tell us all about the exciting work that they're doing right now. A massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? So my name is Jean-Marc Belaïch. Uh, I'm based in New York. Uh, I am the Chief Marketing Partnership and Strategy Officer for Canton Square. It's a long title. Sorry about that. Um, but this is what I do. So I manage marketing teams and partnership teams uh, globally for the firm. We have offices in uh, Paris, uh, Headquarter, London, uh, Munich. New York and San Francisco, uh, and so I have some teams uh, spread out across. Before that, um, I have a quite a, an unusual background for someone in tech. I was not born in tech. Uh, before that, I started my career as a consultant. I spent 22 years with Boston Consulting Group. I was a senior partner at BCG in charge of luxury fashion and beauty in Europe and then in the U.S., and uh, then I joined one of my clients, Tiffany & Company. I was at the executive committee of Tiffany & Company, reporting to the CEO. I was on a, one of the officers in charge of strategy, uh, innovation, and uh, the new categories. And as part of my innovation role, uh, I was chasing for good technology to bring in. And this is how I met Canton Square. So Tiffany became one of the first clients of Canton Square in the U.S., uh, and from that, when I left uh, Tiffany, the young CEO of Content Square, who's only 32, uh, asked me to uh, come and help, uh, which I did with a lot of pleasure, and then uh, became an investor and finally uh, a full recruit. Now, Content Square is an AI powered user experience analytics and optimization platform for major retailers and brands that include Walmart, Tiffany, Avon, GoPro, and I could go on and on. But for the benefit of everyone listening, can you help paint a picture of the kind of problems that you actually solve for some of the most famous brands in the world? Absolutely. So if if I try to summarize what we do and take an image, when you have stores or when you have location, could be bank uh, agencies, you have someone that is responsible for this location. And this manager uh, can see what's happening. He sees when he or she sees when a client is not happy. He or she sees when a product is misplaced or a shelf is, uh, you know, dirty or, or when a salesperson is not giving a right, the right speech. Uh, so you can see that with your eyes and you can act upon and, and make the changes that are needed. When you take the parallel uh, online, you're blind. Uh, online, you, with traditional web analytics such as Adobe Analytics and Google Analytics, you know who's entering your store, who's going out, uh, you know the audience, you know if they bought but you don't know what they did really in depth in, 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 in the store. And this is what Content Square is doing. So Content Square is tracking every single movement of the mouse, every single movement of the finger in your mobile or your desktop or your app. Uh, every zoom in, every zoom out is captured by the technology. Every hesitation. So when people hover and don't click, we know. When people start typing and they, they don't understand what, you know, how to fill the form, we know. We know when they have you know, those click rage, when you start dub- <laughs> double clicking on your mobile because it's too slow, we know. So this is the type of thing that we, we can identify and we provide insights to our, our clients about what to change to ultimately optimize conversion rate. Whatever your conversion objective is, could be, of course, e-commerce uh, 
conversion, but could be anything else. It may be filling a form or uh, making an appointment for a car dealer, for example. So this we can track and we can help to improve that. And then we improve engagement and the experience that is provided to, to the consumer. Wow, I never knew anyone was watching my click rate. Yes, <laughs> yes. And we do that uh, all GDPR compliance. Yeah, sure. uh, you know, we're headquartered in France, so we don't capture any information about yourself. Yeah. Any private information is not captured by the technology, but everything else, your behavior is captured and aggregated. So can you tell me a little bit more about how smart analytics and customer-centric attribution are becoming real game changers in the industry now? So absolutely. So let me talk about smart analytics. A few months ago, um, we released a a new uh, features that was an alert. So our client could say for any given KPI, if it's below a certain threshold or above a certain threshold, I want to know, I want to get an alert. And so our system will do it. This is not very AI. This is just automatic tracking of the KPI and sending alerts. But we realized that the same metrics could vary a lot if you take a Thursday morning versus a Saturday afternoon of a busy shopping day. It's going to be very different metrics. And so now our artificial intelligence is able to track and put the metrics in the context if this is a Saturday afternoon, then the range will change. If this is a Monday morning, which is a slower day, the range will change. And so we can adapt based on the device, based on the context, based on the day, the nationality, the country, based on many, many data. Now we can, with AI, understand uh, when to send an alert and when not to send an alert, which is, which is quite new. So that's one example of, of uh, uh, improvements uh, based on AI that we have in our products. The retail industry has been going through somewhat of a tough time recently. But can you tell me a little bit more about how stores are increasingly integrating the digital experience into their brick-and-mortar locations too? Yes, absolutely. So um, the first point I want to make is uh, when it comes to experience, stores still have an advantage versus uh, uh, websites. Because in a store, you can open a restaurant, you can open a coffee, you can put some... You know, whatever event, you can do a concert. How to translate that into digital is a challenge. So I will return the question. To me, the question is really, how do you provide amazing experience online? And and what we try to do also with Content Square is we fight against the Amazonification of the world, like where all the websites will look the same. And, you know, the cart is on the top right, the menu is on the t- top left or whatever. No, we want, we want to provide creative uh, experience for the consumer online and so th- that's that's one thing we do now back to your question in the center of your question uh, there are many things that uh, retailers are doing now also to bring technology uh, in the store there is more and more tracking technology so the same way we track online they try to do it now also in the store you know with with beacon and even cameras trying to recognize the flow of people and where people are waiting and buying so there is more and more coming to the store as well So how do you think AI-based solutions are actually helping marketing executives better understand and connect with their customers? New AI solutions can really help you to understand uh, behaviors. And the one problem that marketers had for years is that their segmentation were based on demographics. So Jean-Marc is a man, lives in New York, level of affluency is X. So, okay, that's my segment versus... uh, Maybe Michal lives in uh, outside of New York and is more affluent or and is a woman and an age group, blah, blah, blah. The problem is this is very limiting because the same Jean-Marc with the same level of affluency, the same, exactly the same person would act very differently uh, if he's uh, uh, surfing on, on the web on his mobile uh, on uh, uh, Monday morning because probably I'm, I'm in the subway at that time. Uh, and so I'm in a hurry. I want to check something really quick. The connection is gonna la- not going to last for too long. So that's the same Jean-Marc that wants speed, efficiency. I don't want I don't want too much inspiration. Maybe I want to close something and buy one click something. But the same Jean-Marc maybe on his desktop on Saturday afternoon might be actually surfing with his wife uh, and, and looking for vacation destination and trying to be inspired. And here I have time. And so w- what AI can bring to marketers is a complement of demographic segmentation based on behavioral segmentation, so really emotional and how people feel, and and also on the context. 
uh, that's the Saturday afternoon and the desktop versus the mobile on the Monday morning. And I want to come back on emotion because at Quantum Square, within the one or first two movements of the mouse, we can identify whether this is a frustrated consumer or this is someone that has time or someone that has no time and wants to go fast. And this is the next step. The next step is to become predictive. The next step is for us to say, okay, given what we see here, this Jean-Marc today wants to go super fast. So then we can personalize the, the navigation and make it one click versus, oh, now Jean-Marc has time. So, you know, inspire him, put videos because he has much more time. And this is just an example to, of a direction that we are heading. It feels like there's a real trend towards hyper-personalization here. Is that something that you're seeing too? Absolutely. And I just mentioned a few examples. Again, not to repeat myself, but for us, uh, hyper-personalization needs to be based on three dimensions. One is demographic, because it's still relevant. Two is context. And three is behavior. Uh, and, and that's the most, most important thing. And I have to say, with GDPR being so important now, and not only the law themselves, but also the mindset of consumer. More and more people have heard that many big corporations are taking their data, right? You've seen the Cambridge Analytics scandal and many other things that happened recently. And so based on that, people are more and more you know, cautious when it comes to providing their data. Yet they want personalization. And so there is a little bit of a conflict here. And that's why when the personalization is based on context and behavior, then this is GDPR compliant because it's not about Jean-Marc or Neil. It's more about, you know, the behavior of Jean-Marc and Neil inspire us to personalize this way. So are there any other trends that you're noticing here at the moment? Yeah, I think we touched bad on some of them, but I think uh, clearly the rise of experience. People are looking for experience. People are craving for experience. And if there is no experience, they, they, they don't, don't go to the shop or they don't even go to the websites, uh, full point. So uh, the one, one challenge for brands is, as I said, in retail, uh, in a store, it's quite easy to provide an amazing experience. Uh, at least you have the space to do it. Online, you have to replicate that. And you know you cannot open a restaurant online. You cannot uh, put a, a climbing wall <laughs> on your website, right? So you need to find other ways to do it uh, and, and, uh, and be creative with your website. And again, we, we really fight against the Amazonification of the world. We want all websites to be very creative and provide unique experience. So experience is clearly one, one key trend. We touched upon personalization. One, one statistic that I want to offer to your audience, I read recently that in the U.S., 36% of people aged in between 18 and 30 have a tattoo. 36%. And to me, a tattoo is the extreme personalization, right? It's to say I'm different and to the point that I put it on my, on my skin forever. Yeah. That's ultimate personalization. And yet, we don't have 36% of websites that are, optimi- uh, that are personalized. Much, much less than that. And so clearly, this is a second trend. And then the third trend is GDPR. I think people are more and more cautious with data. And so for brands and retailers, I think when you combine all that, you need to be able to provide experience online uh, based on, on behavioral segmentation and, and, uh, and contextual segmentation, more, more than demographic segmentation only because more and more it will be difficult to get only demographic uh, data and also they're not as, as relevant so for everyone listening that has been unable to swing by booth 223 what is the key message that you've been delivering and that you want everyone to leave with well if you if you're not at adobe and are not able to visit uh, the booth go to our website because our website is amazing it's full of of great uh, insights we have a lot of data we have a blog that is fantastic with a lot of data so if you are interested in anything around around online experience and ux come to our website and, and check the blog and also check our product check the demo uh, you can you can uh, see a demo on our website uh, i think it's really cutting edge to a point that i decided myself to switch from an executive position and incorporate to an executive position at content square so after the summit what's next for you and your team at content square yes uh, Next, we have, uh, um, you know, first we are in, we are in a very fast growth uh, business. Uh, our business uh, doubled last year. We're going to double this year as well. Uh, and, and when you grow so fast, uh, sometimes you don't have the time to think about what's next because, you know, quarter after quarter we, we grow and, and we have so many more clients that are joining us. But um, part of my role is to think about the future. And, you know, strategy in tech 
I don't think it's like when I was at Tiffany, strategy was three to five years and sometimes five to seven years. Uh, in tech and at Content Square, strategy is more 12 to 18 months, but we have some very exciting plan. Uh, you know, we raised $60 million recently, so we, we can acquire companies and this is something we could look at. Uh, we have a very ambitious roadmap to add more features to our product. Uh, one key feature that we want to add is benchmarking, as an example, where you know not only we will give you your data, but we can compare with your industry peers. Uh, that would be quite useful. We have, uh, as I said also earlier, uh, a move towards uh, prediction and predictive analytics, uh, which is a big thing for us. So we have many, many exciting things in the pipe, and uh, I'm uh, very excited about uh, the next few months. Can you remind the listeners of where they can find you online and also contact your team just in case they've got any questions about all the topics we've covered today? Reach me. I'm, I'm accessible. You, <laughs> my email is easy. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We will uh, we'll take any questions from your audience. Thank you, Neil. I really had a good time. Thank you. Wow. I walked away from today's conversation with so many thoughts around how AI-based solutions can help executives better understand and connect with their customers. And also the effect, and this is a very important one, of data privacy on the retail industry, especially in regards to ad targeting. And also, of course, how stores are increasingly integrating digital experience into their brick and mortar locations too. Not to mention the trend towards hyper-personalisation, which we've heard a lot about this week already. And there is so much more. But I'm curious, what were your takeaways from that conversation? I'm sure there was a few surprises in there for you, because this one, like I said at the beginning of the show, really blew me away. But I'd love to hear your expertise and your opinions on everything that you've heard. So please, email me techblogwriter at outlook.com or tweet me at Neil C. Hughes. Now I'm going to hit that show floor and try and find another great guest for tomorrow. But more than anything, just a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.